Give us an example without naming names of a problem you're dealing with. Of a problem I'm dealing with right now. Or have dealt with it, I mean, it's, what's it's complicated and involves all this. Okay, one is uh, service dogs. A uh, service dog is different than a guide dog. A guide dog for the blind is very well defined. Uh, about five years ago, um, uh, an advocacy group uh, convinced a congressman to put a law in place that the VA would provide service dogs to, to veterans. And that's about as big as it got, and that's, the law was passed. So then it comes over as a law, and my job then, because it, it's assigned to prosthetics, well, I have to develop uh, regulation and policy and procedures to carry this out. Well, it turns out there, are, there were no real standards uh, concerning service dogs. Now, a service dog, for folks that may not know, is that you often see them, and they'll have a saddle on their back, and they're with a disabled individual, sometimes in a wheelchair, uh, and they can put things in the uh, in the saddle bags on the on the animal, and sometimes the dog can do things like open doors, and, and uh, there are other functions that dogs are supposed to be able to perform. And so there's a large advocacy group out there pushing service dogs as being a solution for helping uh, disabled folks get through life and to be independent. But there's no, so we had, to, I had to put together a work group because there's no standards and how to develop policy when, you know, do you have a chihuahua and a German shepherd? Do they, what kind of function do they perform and who trains them? And you have people in prisons that train them and you have uh, people in their homes that train them. And so there's a website, you go to the website on service dogs, there's, there's dozens and dozens of them. And all these folks are well-meaning, but what are the standards? So we have to develop standards to ensure quality of care to the veteran because, you know, the dog, you know, you, you got to make sure the dog is taken care of because then the, the, the human, the humane folks want to make sure that the dog's not mistreated. So there's training issues for who trains them, uh, training issues for the veteran, how do they reuse an animal, which kind of animals do you use, how are they trained. So we had to put all this together. While we're putting it together, well, the congressman keep getting pushes from the avid groups to where is, why isn't the VA providing service dogs yet? So it took us another, we had to do research. There's no research to support it. So we, to, I had to hold them off while we did some research. So we did a couple of research projects to see, you know, what do dogs, do they really function the way they do? Are they, what do they cost? What do they work? What can they do? How long do they live? And what are the vet bills going to be? What kind of harnessing do you have to pay for? I mean, all these kind of issues. How, by the way, how much do they cost? <laughs> Depends. You get a nonprofit gives you the dog. Other folks want to charge you fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and so it's like you know it's all over the board. And uh, who, who and, and what are your standards for training? And so that's that's a big issue. Well, who, who pays in the in the end, and how many how many service dogs? Well, I'm supposed to figure all this out. See, this is what we do. <laughs> is the law is passed now? How do we make it work? And so it took us about five years to come up with getting the research project. Took a long time and research project and we had a work a group committee and and meanwhile we're getting a lot of pressure from certain congressmen who want this to be provided and so um but we can't you know we explain to the different congress folks why we're not making any quicker progress than we are and so they understand that and it's a, it's a process but that, and how long did it take to get that? It's taken about five years, and we finally have a final draft in place. And so what we're going to do is we're going to provide service dogs on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we'll accept dogs only from nonprofit organizations. And we're developing standards. We have to develop the standards because there are no standards. We're working with the service dog industry to develop standards and training and, and other Well, standards. how much will VA pay of all this? We're not going to pay anything for the dog because we'll get the dog from nonprofit. We will pay the veterinarian cost, and we'll pay for the harnessing. That's what we do for the guide, guide dogs. And how many do you expect to have to provide? Well, that's another thing we don't know. Uh, that is an unknown to us. Um, we're going to do it on a case-by-case -case basis because at this stage we have no idea which disability we can use a service dog, and um, we, those are unknowns for us. But just for uh, case of this discussion, how much did it cost you to do those studies um, and how long did they take? Well, oh, they cost they cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to do the studies. Um, and like I said, it took, uh, the, they're supposed to be um, 
18 month studies, they turned into three year studies because of the difficulties of putting together the, the, uh, the research on it, the evaluation. Meanwhile, is it, are any of these veterans getting dull? No. No. And are the members of Congress that pushed the hardest for it still in Congress? Right. They're still there? They're still there. Are they unhappy along the way? Because well, they're unhappy, yes, but we haven't been able to come up with the policy yet. We're not providing the dogs, and, and so there are some vets who want these dogs. What about the advocacy groups? Are they the advocacy groups want the dogs to, you know, because they think the service dogs are a good solution. So th that's part of, the, part of the, what makes my job so interesting and so great is that we are responding in a, we have to respond to Congress. We have to respond to the veterans' needs. We have to stay within the rules of how the government works. We have to be fiscally responsible, in other words, be attention to cost. We have to balance all of these in trying to meet the needs of all these different constituencies, the veteran, the service dog industry, the Congress, you know, and then of course the budget people. I need to be able to give them information about how many of these dogs we're going to provide, but how much money would that cost? So this is an example of, of a sticky issue that came down the pike that, that you can't ignore. It's important. It has value to certain individuals and certain veterans. To speculate, though, how, in the end, how many dogs do you think you're going to have to uh, deal speculate. with? Speculate. You know, I even hate to say this. I can't speculate. I don't know. Will it be a thousand, or will it be 500, or will it be 20,000? I think it would be 500 to 1,000. It won't be 20,000. No. I don't think so. Is it worth all this expense? All this time. Well, that's always the crucial question: is is it worth the expense? If if the dog is able to perform what's supposed to do, then it'll be worth it to the individual. And that's where government is different than private industry. We in the government, yes, we may spend more money to solve this particular problem, but over a period of time, we've increased the quality of life of the individual. We've put stability into the industry we have responded to up to a law. And so we, we have been able to stabilize what has been an, an unknown area and put some structure and form to it and begin to frame it. Now, whether it's worth it or not, when you're dealing with the, the human body and, and the condition, you know, is, a, is this arm worth uh, $2,400 and uh, is it worth it versus the myoelectric arm, which is worth maybe $60,000? So which one of these is best for me? Cost-wise, the, the bean counters will say, no, you, you go with the, this arm. Health-wise, quality-wise, and, and just from a human standpoint of, of quality of life, you go with the myoelectric. So that's how you do this. Fred Downs, we're, we're out of time. And those that want to read more can go back to book notes and talk more where we have the 1992 discussion on your book. And we thank you very much for joining us for the last hour. For a DVD copy of this program, call 1-877-662-7726. For free transcripts, or to give us your comments about this program, visit us at qna.org. Q&A programs are also available as C-SPAN podcasts.